Hi everyone and welcome to A Bar Above. So today we're going to be talking about some tips and tricks on how to create cocktails specifically for brands. So stay tuned. So designing cocktails is a very creative process. Um, it's very personal and there's a million ways to do it and there's no right way or wrong way to go about it. But I know for me personally, sometimes I just need to take that first step forward. I need to find a little bit of inspiration. And then as soon as I take that first step, all the pieces start to fall together and I end up with a great cocktail at the end. Well, hopefully. So today I'm going to be creating a cocktail with a very specific brand in mind. And that brand is Absolute Vodka. So um, the, the process is very similar whenever I do like a wedding cocktail or private event cocktail, um, product launch cocktail or anything like that. Um, the process is usually very, very similar. So the first thing that I'll usually do is I will start by gathering as much information about the scenario as possible. So in this case, I am going to be gathering as much information about Absolute as possible. Um, I know it's a product made in Sweden, so I'll probably do a lot of research on the culture, the flavors, the history, and, you know, the more information I have, the better. And while I'm doing that research, I'm going to keep an eye out for a couple of key things that's going to help with the cocktail design process. Uh, so for me, when I go and do the research, I try and keep in mind um, any possible really fun names uh, during the research, any great flavor combinations that um, kind of pop out during the research, and any kind of visual effect or visual impacts like garnishes, uh, color combinations, and stuff like that. Um, when I do the research, that's something else I keep in mind as well. So I've went ahead and done all the research um, for Absolute, and I learned a, a lot of really interesting things. It's going to help me in the in cocktail design process. Um, first of all, it is a brand that started in 1979, but the brand Absolute started much earlier than that, back in 1879. And the gentleman that started it, his name is Lars Olsen Smith. And if you look on a bottle of Absolute, you'll see that little emblem on the top there, and that's actually a picture of him. And he was the gentleman that introduced um, continuous distillation and the separation of fusel oils out of the final distillate, resulting in an absolutely pure vodka, hence the name Absolute. So one of the more interesting things I learned about Absolute is the fact that they're one of the greenest distilleries out there and they've been practicing you know, these green practices well before it was fashionable to be marketing that. Um, so for example, I know that um, all of the ingredients that are used to make this bottle and the ingredients inside of it are sourced within Sweden. And um, from my understanding, the new product line, Elix, everything is sourced within 15 miles of the distillery. I mean, that's just mind-blowing that such a great product can be sourced so close to where it's being produced. It's just really good to see that kind of stuff. And uh, they adapt a lot of other green technologies, like they actually use the cold river water to chill down the distillate, and thereby minimizing the amount of energy they have to use to create their product. So another interesting thing about Absolute is Absolute as a company is a big supporter of the arts. If you go to their website, you can see all of the fun things that they're doing in the art community. And if you've seen a lot of their special edition bottlings, you'll know that they have a very large visual impact, um, very colorful, very bold colors, and it definitely stands out. So that's something that I'm going to keep in mind during the cocktail process to really kind of capture Absolute, the brand of Absolute into a cocktail. So the next thing uh, that I researched was the Swedish culture, just to understand kind of some of the other things that they produce that they're known for. Um, and what I came up with was Saab, Volvo, Ikea, ABBA, um, Ace of Bass. Um, but I'm, I'm not much of a music person, so I think uh, I would do a bad job of kind of translating that into a cocktail. So one of the more interesting things I found out about Swedish culture is they have a celebration in the spring the last day of uh, fall and into spring is called Walpurgis Night. And uh, it's exactly six months away from um, Halloween and it shares a lot of similar attributes to it as well. So this special event or this special holiday is a way to kind of push away the demons of uh, winter and really celebrate the new life and prosperity and all that. So people actually get dressed up like they do in Halloween. Um, there's actually a tradition where the young people in the town we'll go from house to house and decorate it, kind of like Christmas, they'll put tree branches up and colorful streamers and stuff like that. And as a reward, um, the people that own the house will give the young people eggs, kind of like Easter almost is in a way, but it happens on the 1st of May, so May Day. So the, unfortunately we're not in spring, so 
But if we were, that would be a great template for you know a cocktail. So one of the other things that is really famous about Sweden, and I, I didn't know about this until I started doing my research, is that they produce this little tiny wooden horse. And it's kind of an iconic piece of folk history with uh, Sweden. And it's called, a, I'm going to butcher this name as well, Dalakarlian Dal, Dal horse, I believe it is. And um, it has a lot of history to it. It goes back hundreds of years, back to the 1700s, uh, when there was a war. I think it was Charles XII or somebody was um, waging war all across Europe. And many of his soldiers were being you know, housed in a lot of the Swedish communities. So as a way of saying thanks, some of the soldiers would actually carve these little tiny horses out of pieces of remnant wood and hand them to the kids in the town. And um, so it started this whole tradition of creating these little tiny, they call them dollar horses. And, um, you know, it's, like I said, iconically folk history in Sweden. So that's going to be where I start the kind of creative process. And already a cocktail comes to mind, and that's the horse's neck. So I'm going to use the horse's neck as a framework for creating this cocktail. Now, one of the cool things about the dollar horse is the most famous ones, the most iconic ones, already have a certain color um, associated with them. So it's typically like this bright orange or red color, and then a lot of other colors kind of involved with it as well. So this is going to be a great way to incorporate that yellow lemon peel garnished with the horse's neck as well. So a horse's neck is typically just about two ounces of rye or bourbon, and then topped off with ginger ale and ice. And then you have a really elaborate lemon peel garnish that just kind of drapes over the side. And that's essentially the horse's neck. So what I'm going to do is actually adapt that for using Absolute and kind of keeping some of those markers and some of the research that we made in mind as I design a cocktail. Um, so the first thing that I really wanted to capture was that color of the dollar horse. So you have that vibrant red kind of orange color. And I went through a couple different modifications. I tried, you know, cherry hearing. I tried um, Campari. I tried all these other um, kind of mixers, and nothing really kind of had the intensity that I was looking for. So what I did instead is I took out that ginger ale, and I'm going to replace it with a homemade hibiscus and cinnamon soda. And now for the garnish. This might take a while. So there we have it, everyone, the Dolisarian horse. So I've used a lot of the information that we gathered during the research. Um, you know, the bright color of the Dolisarian horse is definitely represented um, with the hibiscus and cinnamon soda here. Um, you have the high contrast with the beautiful red, all the white with the, um, the ice, and the bright yellow from the, the garnish there as well. And that kind of embodies the artistic love of Absolute. And um, we had a little bit of fun as well. I got to break out my carbonating um, machine, which I'm always a big fan of, and any excuse to use this thing. Um, I'm, I'm always excited to do so. So, um, yeah, we'll have some more videos for everyone in the future. But until then, I hope you all have a great shift and cheers. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, find us on Google+, or visit us at abarabove.com.